Hello, uh, I'm Keita Watanabe, and uh, uh, if you take a look at the slide, uh, oh yeah, I actually, uh, there's my name actually. So, uh, uh, okay, uh, seems like uh, the uh, title, uh, we have two titles, but uh, uh, please ignore a practice guide on AWS Inferential, because uh, 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 in this session, I'm not going to talk about Inferential, uh, which is uh, already covered in the postal session. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, this session uh, originally uh, supposed to be done by uh, our colleague Yurosh, but uh, uh, because of some unfortunate accident, uh, he's not available, so uh, I'll be uh, talking about uh, today's session on behalf of himself. So uh, before going to uh, actual topic, let me uh, uh, briefly introduce my team. So my team, uh, AWS Frameworks team, is supporting uh, our self-managed machine learning workload, which is a uh, 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 machine learning workload which uh, doesn't use any managed solution, such as SageMaker, for example. And uh, uh, as a software stack, uh, we are mostly using uh, Kubernetes, uh, EKS, uh, Slam, Power Cluster, AWS Batch. And uh, uh, the primary workload uh, uh, is uh, LLMs, but not limited to that. Uh, machine learning, in general, will be uh, our scope. And, uh, so uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our latest option for uh, distributed uh, or a large-scale machine learning model training. But before, joining to that, uh, before jumping to that, let me briefly talk about uh, uh, LLM trends and uh, so forth. So uh, first up is uh, our large language models trends. So uh, as all of you uh, have already know uh, and also have seen in the uh, session or uh, new reps, uh, uh, the number of parameters uh, uh, of machine learning models uh, ever increasing over time, uh, uh, especially uh, recent years. Which presents uh, new challenges such as uh, uh, in communication through uh, uh, nickel or GRU, uh, and also uh, we need to tackle uh, uh, memory limitations and also uh, uh, need to uh, exploring uh, um, heterogeneous architectures, uh, which uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, raise the needs to support uh, uh, different data types. So with that being said, uh, for such a challenges, uh, we recently uh, released uh, AWS Trainium, uh, which is a cost-efficient uh, uh, LLM option uh, uh, available. So AWS Trainium is the second generation uh, AWS developed uh, uh, in-house chip for uh, machine learning training, which is uh, 1.5 uh, more performant uh, for popular uh, NLP models uh, compared with uh, uh, P4D instance and also up to uh, four times uh, network bandwidth uh, compared with the same instance. And as a result, uh, the uh, cost-wise, we have uh, uh, up to 50% reduction uh, uh, to train uh, LM models. So far, we have uh, three uh, type of instances uh, which support uh, Trainium. Uh, the smallest one is uh, TRN1.2xlarge, uh, uh, which uh, has uh, one Trainium chips. And uh, the largest one is uh, TRN1.32.xlarge, uh, which uh, equips uh, uh, 16 uh, uh, Trainium chips. And uh, uh, in this reinvent, which uh, uh, was ha actually happening uh, uh, at, at the same time uh, as we have uh, new rips, uh, we have launched TRN1.32xlarge, uh, uh, which is essentially TRN1.32xlarge, uh, uh, but have uh, a double uh, uh, instance networking uh, uh, capacity. So this Trainium ha has uh, uh, native support for a wide range of data types, uh, such as uh, uh, FP32, uh, TF32, uh, BF16, uh, FP16, uh, UINT, and uh, configurable FT, uh, FP8. So as a result, uh, uh, compared with, uh, again, with a P4D instance, uh, we have uh, achieved a huge uh, improvement uh, in uh, uh, PFLOP's uh, performance. For example, uh, compared with uh, uh, in, the, in the comparison of uh, uh, fraud 16, uh, uh, the performance of uh, Trainium uh, is uh, 1.4 times better than uh, that of P4D. Uh, similarly, for uh, floating point uh, uh, 32, uh, we have uh, uh, 2.5 uh, more performant uh, uh, capability in uh, Trainium and five times uh, more performant in uh, uh, fraud uh, 32. This uh, 
uh, is partly enabled by our new uh, feature called stochastic rounding. So uh, in neutral rounding, uh, say if you have uh, uh, 1.2, uh, it will always be uh, uh, rounded to uh, 1. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, when you do uh, stochastic rounding, uh, uh, it will be rounded uh, uh, by, uh, based on its number. So uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, um, um, two times uh, out of 10, uh, uh, you got to have two. And uh, uh, for the rest, we have a uh, one. Based on that, we can uh, achieve a better performance uh, uh, better training performance uh, uh, with uh, uh, faster uh, training time. So let me uh, lastly explain about uh, PyTorch integrations. PyTorch integration uh, of Trainium uh, is enabled by uh, the software stack uh, shown in here. Uh, in the first layer, we have uh, a PyTorch, of course, uh, uh, which uh, has uh, lazy, lazy tensors uh, for e eager uh, execution and comparison. And the second layer is JIT cache, uh, which uh, hiding uh, comparison overhead and uh, uh, kind of uh, easing uh, uh, de uh, development of machine learning models. And uh, uh, PyTorch XLA uh, converts uh, PyTorch operations into corresponding XLA operations and XRA is uh, uh, the compiler-based uh, linear algebra execution engine. And uh, uh, all of those uh, stuff enables uh, uh, distributed trainings. And uh, in Trainium, uh, we uh, support a mixed precision uh, uh, FP16 and BF16. And uh, uh, data part, uh, DDP is also supported. And uh, if you uh, want to go uh, even more, uh, I mean, uh, uh, supporting multiple instance uh, training, uh, uh, FSDP is, uh, is also supported by a uh, neuron SDK, which is uh, 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 SDK we use to train uh, uh, ML model on Trainium. So this is uh, the uh, uh, minimal code uh, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can use uh, to train uh, about large models. Uh, so in here, we are using uh, a hugging face transformers. And if you have uh, experience uh, training your model uh, using uh, uh, hugging face and PyTorch, uh, you might notice that uh, there's not so much difference uh, uh, from uh, what you do uh, uh, in usual uh, uh, model training uh, using GPUs. All you need uh, to do are a few things. One, uh, first one is uh, uh, import a, a torch X-ray, uh, as shown on the top. And then, uh, uh, as usual, you got to uh, uh, instantiate your models, uh, PyTorch models, and uh, uh, prepare training groups. In the training groups, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, probably unfamiliar unfam uh, lines called XM mark steps, which uh, uh, tells uh, uh, XRA to uh, uh, compile the graph to uh, optimize uh, its performance. And uh, uh, during training, uh, uh, you just need to uh, uh, do uh, uh, optimize the steps to uh, do the backward computation and update your uh, network. Uh, all of them uh, uh, can be done uh, uh, in this manner. So that's uh, essentially the brief uh, explanation of the models. But uh, if you want to train a PyTorch model in a more naive way, uh, you can do, uh, do them as well. So uh, in that situation, uh, uh, you got the needs to uh, uh, instantiate XM device and uh, transfer uh, your PyTorch models and uh, uh, the tensors, uh, which will be uh, uh, put into training steps uh, into uh, XM devices, just like what you do uh, 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 you, in your training uh, with your GPU devices. Sorry, it doesn't go to the next slide. Uh, excuse me? No yeah, 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 no questions. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, that's about, uh, about it. Thanks so much.